Good evening. Welcome back, poetry lovers. Here I am, the faceless ZM Wise, here with Mr. Roger. And he's going to talk about the musical arts and how it has influenced him, what he gets out of it, and some of his favorite musical tastes, which are very eclectic. First, I'd like to ask you, sir, what did your parents try to get you into, and what was your musical upbringing like? Well, they used to listen to a lot of music, mainly on the weekends, because they both worked. So when it was a weekend and it was more relaxed, um, especially on Sundays, they had a big hi-fi, which is high fidelity, it's this big unit, and uh, had a record player and speakers and also a big radio. And uh, they would often turn on the radio you know, would just kind of be playing throughout the house. It was in the living room, I remember, in, in Wilmette, our Wilmette house. And I remember hearing a lot of, um, they would play a lot of Frank Sinatra, a lot of big band music, because that was their era. They really learned to dance up a storm and, and got to see some of the big names, Frank Sinatra and the Jimmy and Tommy Dorsey and Glenn Miller and Artie Shaw and, um, uh, who's the clarinetist, uh, Benny Goodman, and, um... What about Pops? Louis Armstrong? Uh, I don't know if they ever saw him, and they didn't play a lot, but I, I liked him. I thought he was great. And, um, so I, I used to listen to them a lot, and in, in particular, each of them had their own taste, too, be, besides a mutual love for big band music. They really, uh... Uh, Grammy used to listen to the opera. She loved opera. That was, I think, her favorite genre. And also classical. And she used to teach me a little bit about the classic composers and some of their most famous pieces, you know, from Tchaikovsky and Rachmaninoff and Bach and, and Mozart. Um, but she also, she really loved the opera. And so she used to tell me about some of her favorite stories and what they meant to her. Um, and it took me a while to develop an affinity and, and appreciation for opera. I don't know if I, I never got to the, to the level that she was at but for as far as acumen and, and confidence about it, but it's a fascinating genre. And then Graf used to like to listen to uh, country music, interestingly enough, because what's ironic is that Grammy was, grew up in Texas you know, San Antonio, but she wasn't too crazy about country western music, <laughs> although she, she did love, um, she did have a couple favorites. But he used to listen to Randy, Randy Travis and Willie Nelson and, um... Roger Miller? Yeah, Roger Miller and some folks like that. He used to watch Hee Haw, so they had Buck Owens and <laughs> those guys, so that was interesting. And, and whenever I'd play, you know, some, like, um... I remember each of them had a favorite song that I played that they glommed on to when I had my stereo in my room. Uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. I used to play Shining Star. And Grandpa just loved that song. He would come and dance in my room when I heard that. And he used to ask, ask me to jack it off, you know, and turn it loud. And Grammy loved, uh, I remember one of her favorite more modern songs was um, Love's Theme by Barry White Orchestra. So I always think of them when I hear those songs, too. Wow. So, um, yeah, so that was, uh, they, they also loved musicals. So they had a lot, you know, they had a broad range of musicals. They loved Fiddler on the Roof and Mame and, and uh, Carousel and, and, uh, and um, what's the one, Camelot. Um, God, there's tons of them. They used to play a lot of musicals, too. And, that was, and then they used to take us to see musicals in Chicago and downtown, so we got uh, developed an interest of that. And what's neat about the big band, going back to big band music, is I eventually went to school up in Wisconsin, at the University of Wisconsin, and I was in the marching band, and my conductor actually, he loved big band music, and he had a course that he taught in the music building on big band music, and it was great. He got to learn about all the different composers and the kind of rise from Dixieland and jazz and and big band music and how that all evolved and some of them really neat obscure artists, you know, like Big Spider back, a trumpet player, and Bunny Bear again, and Harry James, and Grandpa and Grammy actually danced their first 
dance down in San Antonio to a Harry James song. Um, he was a great trumpeter, but anyway, my conductor taught this great class, and he used to, during the quizzes, he used to pass out these quizzes after he would teach us stuff, you know, and some of the questions might be like, what's the title of this song? So he'd start playing the music, you know, and you have to guess the title. And when it came to the title, like in the lyrics, he would jack it up to give us the answer in turn. <laughs> Played the lyrics, but um, it was a very fascinating course. Actually, it was really great to learn about the evolution of that particular genre, and I, I just loved that. I think it was a real innocent time, post-war, you know, uh, World War II, and America was just bursting at the seams, and and the music was just wonderful. And Grammy and Grandpa danced a lot of big band music and, and won a lot of dance contests too. So, and they got to see some of these these artists like Frank Sinatra and guys like that. And I just, I just so envious. I think that's really neat. That's wonderful. That is wonderful. So, growing older, you started to become obsessed with your favorite band, The Beatles. How did you guess? <laughs> as, your, as your shirt portrays that. So, tell me how you got into them and what you get out of their music. What, uh, what have they done for you? Uh, what have you seen them do for the world? Well, um, your Uncle Mark used to be playing Beatles in his room a lot, and that's what I think he used to hear most of the coming. He used to have, he had Beatles records and albums, and so and he would play a lot of things over and over. And uh, and so it, it wasn't hard. I mean, you heard him on the radio and on records, and, you know, everyone had an interest, and everyone young had a deep interest in them. And to me, they just became, as I got older and learned to, heard more and more and more of their, their music, I just developed such a love and passion and interest for them. For me, they're everything. They, they, they changed the world literally, in, you know, in music and in culture and in, in songwriting, composition, and innovation in the studio, and, you know, thanks to George Martin, their producer. And I, I just can't believe their body of work is so magnificent. It's so huge. You know, you hear about guys with one-hit wonders, and they get popular from you know one or two songs. And these guys, Beatles, have written hundreds, and hundreds of songs. Not only together, collaborating together, but on their own. You know, and uh, it's just a, an amazing, um, it's an amazing accomplishment and achievement in music and. I think I, my favorites are George, John, Paul, and Ringo in that order, but I really have an appreciation for all of them. I, I, I never get sick of them. Um, I come and go in waves like I think you do, and, and you know, there you come to a point sometimes you start wanting to hear them, and oh, you just want to listen to just Beatles, and then you want to start researching, and what's about this song, the background, this and the meaning of this, and how did they record that, and what was the impetus for that, and mm -hmm. how did they get inspired for that? And you just absorb it all. And the more you hear about it and their stories and their life stories, they're just fascinating. And they were good guys, too. I mean, they, they, they had, a, I think, good sense of values, human values. Um, and uh, is aside from being creative geniuses. And um, you know, to see them dropping off, starting with John, and, you know, and then George is just heartbreaking, heartbreaking. I think everyone wanted them to get back together again, although they did a little collaboration in the 90s using a recording at John's, which was pretty cool. Um, but um, I would I would love to see the Beatles' sons get together and form a band, you know, Danny Harrison and, and, uh, and uh, McCartney's son and... and um, Sean Lennon and Julian Lennon and Zach Starkey, you know, and all these guys. I, boy, that would be it. And then have them do a revival. You know, but I, I know I'm not the first to think of that. A lot of people would love to see that. But. Definitely. Um, so, last but not least, um, what do you get out of music and what does music mean to you in this great world of ours? Mm. I get a lot of things out of music like most people do. You know, it's a... Uh, you like to listen to certain music depending on your mood, depending on your, you know, that has memories planted in, 
when you heard a song for the first time, what you might have been doing. You know, it could bring back multi-sensory experiences, what you smelled at the time, what you were feeling, where you were, who you were talking to, if there was a crisis involved, you know, um, or, or some incident. Um, I've listened to ambient music, kind of space music, when I just need to chill and relax, or just that that's, I can study and read best the ambient music. I love Celtic music, very eclectic interest. Uh -huh. I love Celtic, Irish, and Scottish music, and, 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 um, and classics, and, you know, I think, I think there's a lot of, obviously some songs have a lot of deep meaning, messages, symbolism metaphors. I love studying that and learning about that and why, why, how songs were developed and devised and how they were written and why they were written and who did it together. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them are just kind of novel, you know, the novel ones are fun too, like back in the 60s, a lot of novel music, just fun things that came out. Even today, you know, uh, uh, I think there's there's a meaning in everything. There's, there's significance in all of that. It's very it's, um, it, it really will change a person's aura, I think, to, depending on what you're listening to, you know, and not seeing always a visual with it. Um, so, <laughs> wonderful. Kind of in a nutshell. Well, wonderful. Well, you've heard it from the one and only Roger, or if you haven't already guessed, <laughs> is my father. <laughs> so thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us today. Uh, to our faithful YouTube subscribers and hopefully new ones and uh, <laughs> and uh, explain to us a bit more about the musical arts and the many many benefits of that field. Thank you. Have a great day, senor. <laughs>